Hello and welcome to my ninth episode of Craig's Diary Room podcast here in our bar at our house. My special guest today is Mandy Fisher. Mandy is a professional singer and songwriter, very well known for her own original music, as well as covering hundreds of the most popular sound soul, should I say, songs. Mandy's appeared on BBC One's TV hit, All Together Now, and even when she was 13 years of age, she was on Stars In Your Eyes. But she has a staggering 1 million followers and 12 million likes on TikTok. Oh my days. 12 million likes. Mandy, welcome to our to our bar. Thank you. Are you okay? Me. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. It's first podcast. I believe so. What no, a good start, eh? <laughs> I feel very, very honoured, and being honest, to have you for, for your very first podcast. Why oh, haven't you thanks. done it before? I don't know, like, I don't know, I've maybe never been invited on, <laughs> but this felt right, because as I said, yeah. I, I watch your podcast and I, I see your videos on social media. And, so and you I've have actually seen our podcast, because yes. we've only done eight, you're our yeah. ninth guest. Yeah, yeah. And what do you so, think of them? So it's an honour, it's good. It's, it's really an honour, oh yeah. bless you, thank you, that's really, really good. <laughs> I was not going to wind you up, you know, because if you said to me, I haven't seen um, I haven't seen any of your podcasts. I could have thought. How old? Ah, seen. right. So the boys didn't tell you about the forfeits that we get you to do, and the. But I that would have just been winding right, you up. Okay. I'm kidding. It's gonna say I miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you not read the Is small print? Did you not read the small print? <laughs> <No. laughs> Only joking. So listen, we just mentioned then you do have a million followers on TikTok. I think three quarters of a million on Facebook, Facebook is it or yeah. Instagram is it? So you've got a massive, massive audience out there who yeah. know all about, obviously, your, your, your singing, what you do, you're writing your own songs, uh, covering other people's songs. Um, you've covered a variety of different things, don't you, on your social yeah. media, which we'll yeah. get into. But first, I want to start off with finding a little bit more about you that maybe yeah. your fans and followers out there don't know about. So I want to take it right back to your school days. How was school for you? Uh, when I was younger, actually that's where my singing journey started because okay. I was singing in school and I had an amazing teacher, um, Miss Sanabria she was called, and she rung my dad up and was like, did you know that your daughter can sing? Yeah. You know, and right through my childhood, my dad recorded family videos. Really? And you'd always look back and he'd, he'd be catching me by the CD player going, I'm sure she can sing. You know? what age from when he was catching you he, originally he singing? Uh, maybe four. Five, years of age, you know, five, yeah. Um, so and so once he have an inclination then that yeah. you had a voice, yeah, because you have got a very special voice, oh, and we'll we'll go into that later, like. But yeah, he did. He used to go. I'm sure she can sing. You know, you'd always find me by the CD player with Spice Girls on, and and um, <laughs> then when the teacher said that, that was it. He, he had me on the phone to my aunties, my uncles, and I was singing down the yeah. phone. And they were going, listen to it, you know? <laughs> because my granddad, his dad, sung. Okay, so it's in the yeah. genes of the family then, yeah. isn't it? So he really, really looked up to him. He used to sit him on the fireplace and sing to him, he said. Oh. So then when he heard me, he was like, you're like a, a female version of me dad, you know? Oh. So my dad was really committed to my music. Like yes. That was yeah. his life, so... That was the beginning, and yeah. That was the beginning for it, and then. Yeah. Was you quite academic in school? Did you always know you wanted to be a singer? Yeah. You wanted to be a professional? That was nothing it. else was yeah. going to get in the way? That was it, and my dad had that trail of thought too. He was very much like, oh, well, she, she's going to be a singer anyway, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and sometimes I think, I wish a little bit more I paid attention to it and thought, you know, for things other than singing too, because I would love to be able to be better at maths and, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, singing was always the end goal, you know. Okay. And did you find the teachers were supportive in school? Yeah, they exactly. put me into a gifted and talented scheme and really? into the okay. Philharmonic Children's Choir, you know, and yes, yes. as I said, I had the most amazing... It's the Philharmonic here in Liverpool, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had, yeah. Uh, actually, it was weird because I couldn't find this music teacher. Mm. And I kept Googling her and I was like, I, I need to find her and say thank you because she actually put her own time into... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then have I you had... found her since? Yeah. You have found Well, i done one of my tour shows. Some of the teachers from reception when I was in school come yeah. and she was going to come. But she's she's out touring, like, um, she's like a wellness coach now. Oh, okay. And she went, yeah, Miss Sanabria. So, and then she messaged me and I was like, Lovely. oh, I've been looking for you, you oh, know? Oh, that was nice, <laughs> so, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I bet you that felt great for her because knowing that she's kind of maybe contributed to yeah, the encouragement did, yeah. and the guidance and things like that do you think over yeah. the years yeah she definitely did yeah oh that's yeah. amazing isn't it? so um we, you left school you didn't go to any further education after that or no i just 
secondary school and yeah. then I, t- I tried at one point to do hairdressing okay you know yeah. i've tried different things you know yes, yeah. i worked as a bingo caller at one point bingo caller. yeah <laughs> i worked on reception at the bingo and, yeah no I, I, honestly i thought i've got a microphone it'll yeah. work but um every time i just went back to singing okay and, so what yeah. what made you try some of them other jobs was that feeling that you may not make it in singing at any point was there any hesitation it's because as i it wasn't could, like <clears throat> i couldn't really use it as a full-time job because the income okay. of it you yeah. know what i mean i suppose if you've left school am i right to say 16 or 17 yeah. then would yeah. you be then to to be a professional artist a singer then and doing what they would do bef- if they haven't got a record deal they're doing the rounds aren't they they're doing mm. the bars and the oh, clubs yeah. and the, oh, I've done the all the that. theaters etc yeah. and you've done all that okay yeah so yeah. just leaving them them from school you thought well i'll try to explore other jobs as a bit of a backup if, yeah. it, if it fell through yeah okay and how did you feel doing them other jobs where you're always drawn back to always the music yeah I, I, in lockdown i went in to after i, I lost my dad during lockdown i believe to so yeah i'm sorry to hear that so i went in to be a carer then i was singing i went round throughout lockdown and i was singing outside care homes just for free just oh, to lovely, yeah. so the elderly could listen through the windows you know oh, that's sweet of and me, I got yeah. offered a job while I was there you know to be yeah. the activities coordinator and, and I'd done that as well and, and is that local because you're you're are you born and bred in Wirral are you Liverpool Liverpool are but you moved okay. over to Wirral but moved over to Wirral yeah. okay yeah. yeah yeah okay but I, and I'd done <clears> that and that was when I said you know what I'm, I loved it and I got re- I get really attached to people though I was yeah. really attached to the pensioners <laughs> and everything so and I was taking it home with me you know and I said, this is it now. I need to either give all yeah. to social media and me singing. Now is the time. So I, I quit the job and since then I've been full-time music, Just social full-time media. Music. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go back a little bit because am I right in saying you set up a YouTube channel in 2007? Yeah. 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 <laughs> How old were you then, if you don't mind me asking? I think I was about 15, maybe. About 15? Yeah, I, See, I, I always been... think I could use a computer in 2007. <laughs> I was recording it on a webcam. It was an yeah. awful webcam. The sound was terrible. Yeah. But I still, I remember hitting 100 follow subscribers. And my mum and dad were going, she's got 100 subscribers. She's yeah. got, a, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a silly username I used as well, not thinking it'd go anywhere. Right. But I started yeah. getting... What is the username? God, it was Gibbons A3A. It was my old... Um, surname Gibbons, but it was me. Okay. It was my username at school. It's Gibbons right. A3A, and it started. People started using it and going, "Oh, Gibbons A3A," and I started getting more. And I was yeah. like, "Oh God, I need to <clears throat> need to change." I that. did. I did actually watch the very first video that you put up no. on on your YouTube channel God. in them days, and <clears throat> I mean, I, I thought you sounded brilliant, <laughs> uh, but I can see a big difference from where you were then yeah. to where you are now, yeah. obviously, and that comes yeah. with practice and experience, doesn't yeah. it? You call further development. Um, but once you started to do that then on YouTube, so you were 15, and did you start to build a good following and get quite good exposure from that? Uh, well, some videos... Were, were you on other social media at that point, or was YouTube your first? YouTube was where I, I, I posted my videos, that was um, the am only... Am I right in saying, would, would Facebook have been out in 2007? It was. It, it, did it, it just was, start yeah. right I was about around that area, wasn't it? I think when it comes... I think okay. I've YouTube. Because I'm a very late start to the table. I only started about five or six, seven years ago, I think, on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I think it was things. out, but it, it, yeah. it wasn't as big then. Mm. But I remember I started posting some on my personal page on Facebook and, yeah. you know, my mum's friends or my mum would comment mm. or my, my friends, you know. And this was you, you, you doing covers then at that age yeah, or were you, yeah. you writing any of your own stuff? No, I wasn't, I wasn't writing then. I'd always try, but yeah. it was only when I grew up and like started experience in life that I was able to actually put pen to paper and write about real things. Okay. I think when I was younger, there was not much there, not much depth there. It was just, Mm. you know, Mm. whereas now I I flow with it so easily, you know, but it took time to get there. Took time to actually get there. Yeah. yeah, Mm. It's brilliant. So, okay then. So you've got your, your YouTube one on there now. You're starting to get a bit of momentum. At that age, did you have to take a job on at 17, 18? Do you know what? Believe it or not, I shouldn't have been probably, but I was actually gigging in like pubs and social clubs okay, so you from was... like the age of 15. Yeah. So yeah. I was going to school and then on the weekend I was gigging, yeah. going to school, gigging, you know, it's like... It's it's not bad, I'll let you in on a little secret, <laughs> I don't even know if our guys know here. I was actually, at 13 years of age, did my first strippogram in a pub no. and a bar. 
when I was 13 years of age. So nobody out there can frown at any artist I don't feel bad singing about. or anything like that. I don't feel bad. I did, and I've done about <laughs> 20 or 30 of them by the time I was about 15. But anyway, that's another story. But everyone watching now that. that was there, that were cheering you on, are going to be really questioning themselves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah. What were you all be doing concerned. watching me strip off? <laughs> I did leave my pants on, just for the records yeah. anyway. Oh, we're oh. getting a call. <laughs> So yeah, for our viewers as well, who will go watch this on our YouTube channels, we are actually live, so we won't forget about our friends watching up there on our TikTok. Hello everybody, hey. thanks for joining us, keep tuned in. Um, and again, if you've got any questions, fire them through to us and hopefully Mandy and I will be able to answer them. If not on this live set, we will try to do it better or uh, further down the line. Anyway, where were we before? We were rudely interrupted by the drunk there. <laughs> the cameraman we've got. So you started to do gigs then in pubs and bars. Yeah. Um, how did you find it? Was it nerve wracking? I loved it. You loved it? Yeah, I loved it. Once I experienced singing on stage for the first mm. time, I was hooked. Was it like I addictive? It. You needed yeah. it? Like I was a different person. I'd come off stage, I'd be quite quiet. And then on stage, I remember the first time that I went onto the stage and I walked off the stage and started singing to the audience. And my mum and dad were going, like, what? You know? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. from then, I just <clears> loved it. That was on stage as where I'm like yeah, happy, yeah. you know. So all that singing as a child growing up and your dad videoing you and encouraging everything. you and everything, that really is adding a, a real good yeah. foundation to your confidence in a way, yeah. isn't it? Well, I was used to being on camera. I was used to singing on camera. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was used to recording. I was used to performing. So if anything, my dad set me up for where I am now, yeah, yeah. you know, because it was yeah. right through my childhood. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that age then, did you look up to any other artists who you inspired by? Yeah, um, Shirley Bassey, yes. Elvis Presley, Shirley Bassey. Doris Day, yeah. Tina I, Turner. I personally <laughs> got to uh, hear Shirley Bassey sing. I was uh, invited to a, That's not fair. a big, a big, um, big black tie do on, um, on um, Park Avenue in London in one of the big, hotels and I think it was Next, you know, the clothing brand Next mm. was with them and they bring a special guest on each year and it was Shirley Bassey and it was my dad's favourite singer. My dad passed away was when, one I, of my dad's when I was well. only 13 and I can always remember him wow. talking about her or when she come on the telly, you know, him and my mum would just be kind of in awe of it. So I felt real honoured to be that's, able to be sitting on a black like tie do yeah. and then she walked around the tables just singing away and it was kind of like, oh wow. Oh, I'd be in a special. dream land. Would it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a dream. That. <clears throat> mm. Wow. So Shirley Bassey, one of the many others? Um, Doris Day, which Doris is Day, said yes. a, a song Doris Day did nine stars in the Oh, of course, yes, yeah, 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 yeah um, of course. Tina Turner was a, was a big one for me because yeah. of her showmanship, like how she performed, her yes. energy, yeah, yeah, how yeah, she yeah. held the crowd, and I learnt a lot from Tina Turner. Yeah, she's brilliant, yeah. isn't she? Yeah. yeah. Well, my little friend, you know, I, I went on Big Brother and I was helping Joanne mm. Harris, the Down Syndrome girl at the yeah. time. She loved, absolutely loved Tina Turner, and she, she used to take her off as well, which was quite wow. entertaining in a way, how she, how she stamped around the way she did. Uh, she was brilliant, so we eventually got here to meet Tina Turner, which was brilliant, Stop you know, it was, it was so heartwarming just wow. to see a little face, and, and Tina was brilliant, really good, yeah. give her loads of time and things like that, so yeah, we love Tina Turner. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, then, so we've gone, gone from there then now, so you're now kind of saying a teenager, you're doing the bars and the rounds and things like that, clubs, mm -hmm. where was it going from there? Were you kind of thinking, this is going to be my career now, this could potentially be my future? Yeah. Were you making, don't mind me asking, good money from it? Just because most artists I knew, uh, you know, or, or friends of mine who are doing the rounds, and this is taken out of TV or radio or anything like that, and the, even social media in them days, Yeah. The singing, the bars and the clubs was only ever really like that kind of Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, they were employed. Was, yeah. So was that enough for you to survive on in them days? I at was, that age? To be honest with you, I gave the majority of it to my mum. You know, yeah, like... Yeah, 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 because like, you're still living at home, aren't you? Yeah, I, it was just, in a way, I was a teenager. It was just, oh, I've got this money, you know? Yeah. I'd give like half to my mum and then I'd, she'd take me out maybe buy some clothes or I don't know, you know? It was just yeah. like that or, you know, into music stuff. I, it was just... Yeah, I would, then it, life wasn't so serious. I was still at home. And yes, yeah. Life so was easy then, wasn't anything, it? If anything, I was like, got this teenager, like, wow, I just made £75 off yeah, that, you yeah. know? That's well, <laughs> sort of what it's like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember when I got my first job, I was only 13. I was the cleaning up boy in a butcher shop every yeah. day after school. I used to go Monday to Friday. And my wages, I'm a little bit older than you. This was going back in the 80, early 80s, about 80, 
83, 84. Um, you weren't even born, were you? No, you weren't. No. You weren't even born. So in about 1983, 1984, my wages was £10 a week wow. for doing every day. I was only from 4 o'clock after school till mm. 6, scrubbing the blocks clean. But I loved doing it. I felt like growing up and I was working with adults. Yeah. But I felt rich. Yeah, yeah, I like. felt like I had more money than yeah. any of my pals. Like, oh yeah, well that was so, what it was like for me in a way, really. Mm, you know, I mm. was out making an income at that age. I was, I was privileged. I was yeah, happy, yeah, yeah. but also life wasn't as serious. So it was like, okay. oh, got this money, you know. <laughs> were your friends encouraging at the time? Then were they? Were they encouraging you to support you more, to do more? Were they a bit jealous? Or I, I don't get me wrong. I've had some amazing supportive friends mm. along the way. I did experience a lot of bullying when I was growing up. Oh, okay, you know? yes, yeah. You know. Like you, you think you're better than you know, better than us because you can sing, you know, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. But that's just a jealous side. Yeah, of it, we isn't moved it? from one place because they were, it was really bad. They'd like stand outside the house, you know, and sing like the songs I'd say, but they were like, we always hate you, you know. Or it oh, was bad. Really? Yeah, it was quite oh, bad. I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah, it was just. I don't know, I guess it's just... Who are them horrible little bastards? <laughs> Shout them out now, call them out, tell, no. tell us where they live. No, but I'm, <clears> I, hopefully, you know, they've matured and grown. Yeah, but yeah, Kibble kids can be nasty, we know that, yeah. you know. But my yeah. mum and dad, I had amazing parents. They were like, that is because you've got something. You've got a talent. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah so, and it's rare. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't take that to heart, you know. It Good. made me stronger, yeah, yeah, if anything, yeah, yeah. so thank you. That's a good thing, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can do sometimes negative things like that. Yeah. You know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, it doesn't it? In, true. in so many ways. Mm. Okay, then, so <clears throat> away from them first jobs and things, you, was it, am I right in saying your first TV appearance was stars in your eyes and you're about yeah. 12 or 13, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah. So how did that come about? Me, my dad entered me okay. for it, yeah. yeah. And he actually entered for me to be Jennifer Rush, singing Power oh, of Love. Oh, Jennifer Rush, Power of Love, that yeah, That was yeah, yeah. how it was, but they listened and they were like, you sound like Doris Day, you know? And then- well, They said that, the yeah, production company. Yeah, they were company. like, is there anyone else as well? And, and so I sung it and they were like, you sound like Doris Day, you know? So yeah. then it was Secret yeah. Love, Doris so Day. So who was hosting the show then, in them days? Cat Ely. Cat Ely was hosting yeah, it, was yeah. she, in them days? Okay, that's yeah. very good. Uh, I've, yeah, I've been on a few shows of Cat Ely in the very early oh, stages. Yeah. Um, is it? Is it SMTV, what was it? Something kids TV. I can't remember what it was now. Back in 2000, you guys know it. No, it was way before that. <laughs> Doesn't matter anyone's anyway, cast presenting it. So okay, um, your dad wrote off to you. You got picked. You went on yeah. it, didn't you? How was that experience? Amazing. Like it really helped me. Like it gave me the experience of TV. Yeah. The team were amazing. They kept telling you, you know, like how how good mm. you're doing. Mm. And so you're only 13, so it was the only other, you know, let's say you know, children, isn't it? Really, mm. still at that age. There was no one over 16, 18 in that. No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I think it yeah. was all under 16. Yeah. yeah. So one of my dear friends, Justine Riddock, she sang at our wedding, didn't she, Laura? Um, and she does Tina Turner. She sung simply the best. Wow. And Laura and yeah. I danced her for our first dance. Now. She was in my class all the way through school and she went on to win, win stars in wow. your eyes. Um, I can't think what year it was now. Um, but yeah, she went on and... But, oh, she done... Actually, she done Anastasia when she uh, won it. I'm out of love or something kind of like... Was it? Yeah, 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 Anastasia. Okay. And then she went on to do the Tina Turner one. Uh, Justine Riddle, yeah. And she's under our wedding. We still got her invited around to our house for dinner. Yeah. Um, okay, and how did you get on? I haven't seen that clip of, of stars um, in your eyes. Christine Aguilera won that episode and she was amazing she sounded just like her really yeah. Yeah, yeah everyone was really good i've actually seen some of them to go on to do different shows x factor and all sorts yeah okay so, yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we well, just mentioned x factor <clears throat> i know before you did mention you had a little yeah step in and out but yeah it got wasn't quite camp. right yeah i got to like the last <clears throat> 50. um you got to the last 50 in boot yeah, camp it well, just that's never a fantastic got, achievement because yeah, i'm going to guess Tens, if not hundreds of thousands yeah, of people was, apply, got yeah. to be, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. to me, you know when I, when I, I was shortlisted down from 45,000 people to get in the Big Brother I house. Was gonna say, yeah. When I got that phone call to say, Craig, you're one of them, that's kind of the conversation, when you're one of them, yeah. you're selected, the one of the 10 people to go into the first Big Brother house. I felt like a winner straight away. Yeah, yeah. Because I thought it doesn't matter if I go in on that show and lose, I've won over 45,000 people. Mm. So I was going in kind of a bit of spring in my step, you know, yeah, I was really no, confident and, and happy with it. So you must have felt, because there would have been uh, yeah. hundreds of thousands, I've seen no the doubt. process. You know, it was a yeah. full stadium full of people when I went to the first audition. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was full. And it's so. not usually just that one audition yeah. then, is it? There's other oh, areas all around the country process. which they're... Whole process. And wow. to get down to that is yeah. a huge compliment. Can you remember what you sung? 
Um, first audition I sung And I Am Telling <coughs> You, you know, from Dream Girls. Yeah. It's like a really big musical song. And then I sung Mercy in Boot Camp. And, okay. But as I said, I was 16. They didn't air it, which I'm really grateful for because... Oh, so they didn't use it on TV, no. no. I've seen little clips of myself, mm, but mm. I'm really glad because, I don't know, I'm just... It can hold you back from other TV work and stuff as well, can't it? And oh, right, okay. You know, when you yes, do different yeah. shows. Yes, yeah. But, yeah, you kind of get um, a big pigeonhole, can't you, in yeah. the one? I felt like I wasn't taking it as serious then mm. as I would have liked to, and I didn't give it me all, you know. I kind of was like, okay. oh, it's X Factor, you know. Yeah. No. So I suppose if you got you got some experience out of it, yeah, didn't I did. you? You know, on yeah. a kind of a big stage and competing against the hundreds of thousands of people, we didn't quite make it the cut on TV. Mm -hmm. But now you look at it in a bit of a blessing in yeah, disguise, I would did, you say? Yeah, yeah okay. just it obviously wasn't meant to get aired. It obviously wasn't, but I, I learnt from the journey, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. And then the other, the recently bigger, well, big, bigger show in t 2019, I'm saying on BBC One. Yeah. And that was. Um, all together now? That's right, yeah. Yeah. It was like a new TV show, so not a lot of people have heard of it. Yeah. Like, I watched the first series, and I was like, wow, you know, this is different. Yeah, yeah. And just for our viewers who, who hadn't actually seen it, because I've, I've watched the clip of you on it when I was looking at yeah. some of the different music and things you've done, and it's kind of a hundred people in a kind in of, industry, uh, yeah. in the industry, um, who can kind of vote you in is it that's it yeah yeah and tell us about the whole journey of that then how that started that was probably the most amazing tv experience i had really because yeah. the team were just incredible mm -hmm. i worked with amazing coaches that i genuinely learned from oh okay so you're not just coming in as you and here's all my experience and here's what i've got they, there's people, you're coaching you throughout yeah, the so journey basically, for how long for they basically you work with vocal coaches when you're finding the right song yeah and, they have just, I learned a lot from it and they were just so really help with your confidence yeah. and help you work on what's the best style for you and yeah, yeah it was, a, it was amazing, like, yeah, it's good. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. And how long would the pro, you in the whole process for? Uh, God, months. Months, was yeah. it? Yeah. So, okay. you know, go f going from the auditions and yeah. stuff like yeah. that and workshops, but, but yeah, and then it's, out onto the stage, you left it once you've once you got your song and that you're on that stage though, and that's yeah, your yeah, yeah. that's yeah. you know. And how was that feeling on that spot? You've got I, I don't know three four minutes to deliver this song, and there's so much riding on it. You've got a hundred professionals in the industry who are being yeah. quite judgy and picky, aren't they? Yeah. What was that moment? It's actually like? ninety seconds. You got yeah. You oh, get ninety 90, seconds, so minute and a half. The first thirty seconds, no one can stand up and vote for you. Then you've got a minute to get as many on the feet. Really? So you get 90, 90 seconds to like impress them, basically. Okay. And I'm, I am I right in saying you you obviously can see them all, can't you? And yeah. they're pressing light and the lights coming on. And so then they stand kinda... up and sing along with you. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. So they stand up. So thirty seconds is in. Nobody's voted at this point because yeah. that's the format. How long was it before you seen the first light pop up? Quite soon, to be honest. As soon okay. as it opened, I, yeah. I seen some lights come on, and that was like, oh. Did that but, give you an extra boost yeah. of confidence? But from from the day, the day started about nine nine o'clock in the morning, eight mm. or nine, and I didn't go. On. I was the last act, and they don't tell you what order you was. Mm. And I was, I must have went on stage about twelve o'clock in the night, maybe. Or oh, so you're quite exhausted. Maybe finished about half one in because the morning. Because you know, just the adrenaline and the fear of them things, because they are fearful, aren't they? Yeah. You know, I've done live TV stuff, and it's quite fearful. That drains your energy, doesn't it? And you need energy for delivering. Yeah, well, uh, to be honest with you, I'd waited that long all day that my the nervousness had gone. I just got okay. on stage and I was like, I want to do it now. Just get it out the yeah, way. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready now. I've waited all day. Okay. So if anything, it probably did me good. Yeah. But and I've seen on one of the clips, Jerry Halloway, you yeah. mentioned earlier when you were young, listening, looking up to the Spice Girls Halloween. and things. How did that feel when Jerry stood up and delivered a very positive comment? That Can was, you remember what she said to you? Yeah, that was crazy to me. She and she loves Shirley Bassey and I sung a Shirley Bassey song. Yeah. And weirdly before it, she spoke about Shirley Bassey. Like okay. into it, people sitting by and she was going out. I met Shirley Bassey once, you know. Yes. And yeah. I come out and sung that and she yeah, loved yeah. my dad as well. She seen me dad in the audience, she'd come over to him and Oh that's sweet, just, isn't it? And yes, it, it was yeah. like uh, going back to when I was like four, sitting singing the Spice Girls, and I was like, one of the Spice <laughs> Girls have just said that they like love me and, and what they're I do. And, you, yeah, yeah. And they, she didn't realise she influenced that in a big oh, way. Did you, you know? get to meet her and tell her? I didn't know, but my dad oh, okay. met her. But um, yeah, 
I seen all the feedback on telly and the, yeah, yeah. and the production team was saying how much she she loved me and you know yeah, I was like yeah. I was really touched. Oh, brilliant, yeah. brilliant! And have you since after that or anything got to meet the Spice Girls? No, no. Oh, it would be lovely. Me. It would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I have actually met them, and they are really oh, sweet. Okay. They are really nice. I've, I've worked with them on a couple of other other programs and been at places where yeah. you know we've kind of met them and, yeah. and things like that. One of my famous stories. I'll drop it in now. It's quite quite funny. I well, I done a podcast last week with these three lads from yeah. Liverpool, and they were asking me about some funny things. And I was at uh, a kind of a, a, an awards thing, and I was sitting at a dinner table with Victoria and David Beckham on their dinner. And, and Victoria told me, she said, Craig, if I wasn't married to David on the last night of Big Brother, I was going to come down and propose to you. She said well, to me, that's something in it. I know, I know. I was kind of like, all right, okay, David, wow. you're mistaken. <laughs> Uh, but her mum was there and her sister like, yeah, a little bit awkward, a little bit awkward. But you know what, they're really nice, really sweet. They made me feel real welcome. Oh, and where wow. I've, I, I, you know, I call, call Vicky out for this, for, for being great, yeah. is um, about it's eight years later, I, I released my autobiography and um, we were going through memories and pictures and things. And we had some nice pictures and things. And there's a nice picture of me with Victoria and, and the book was like, yeah, that's a great one. We'll use that. She's a massive profile, you know. Um, so they asked me about the story, what happened, and I mentioned a few times, that was the first night I'd met her. And um, I told the, the book of the story, you know, I told the book publishers and they were like, can't put that, can't put that, she's a married lady. Oh, and right, I was like, yeah. well, David and fat, his mum and everything he was, was right there. there. <laughs> I was just like, I'm telling the truth, you know, yeah. what happened. And they were just like, no, no, the, the solicitors were things, we, we'll mm. have lawsuits and like this, that and the other. Story. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was a bit like, hmm. so anyway, oh, our kind of, we have solicitors on our side and then the book publishers have solicitors. So we wrote to Victoria to kind of say, on this particular mm. night, Craig was with you and you said this and he wants to mention it in yeah. his biography. Yeah. And she signed it off. She said, yeah, that happened. You can use the pictures, the images. Yeah. And uh, she was cool about it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I yeah. love the Spice Girls. How can we yeah, not love, yeah. love the Spice Girls? Okay, so you've had, you've had a variety of different TV exposure from there. Um, have you... I, I take it, and I'm, I don't even write and even say this, Mandy. I take it you've been searching for the record deal, the aiming for the record deal. Is mm. that what you've been searching for? To Most be honest, artists yeah. would be. That's what, when I grew up, that was always the thing. My dad was like, you'll get a record deal. Everyone you met would go, mm. you'll get, a, you try and get a record deal. It was always the thing. Or go on X Factor or do this, you know? So you're always mm. thinking that's what it is. But right now, that's not even. Like, of course, if that come along and the right company and yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. But right now I'm just enjoying putting my music out. I put all my own music out and, and I think if that happens, great. But you see so many artists now that put their own music out and they can they can make it. Like yeah, all yeah, they, yeah. their yeah. followers, their supporters can get them to the top of those charts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah it would be great. Of course <clears> it would. <throat> mm. But I'm... Um, it's not something now that I'm going, I have to get that, I have to get that. I am mm. genuinely just enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah, what you're actually doing. It is a very yeah. different and changing world, isn't it? The way our social media has evolved and yeah. it's allowed an individual without, without the backing of a, yeah. a record label, without their, their experience and their money, you yeah. know, what they put into it, to be equally as successful, if not bigger, isn't it? No, honestly, so many artists now have started from social media mm, mm. and it just shows you anything's possible but that's why supporters and followers are a massive part of it because i couldn't mm. put my music out and it get out there without them no no they no. are my record yeah, label yeah. You, you kind know? of I, I would say you need them more of than course. a record label now because i don't 100%. believe not not many people one would get a record label if yeah. they didn't have a big follower nowadays because true, if you actually. look at you know we've touched on on reality programs you know you've been on the single ones i've been on just the awesome round ones on big on big brother you know um but pe the, the way reality tv has come now a lot of people aren't getting on them unless they've got a seriously big following like the love island yeah, type of programs yeah, and stuff yeah. isn't it okay then so yeah people say to me now i don't see you on tv very much lately craig and i say I'm, I'm cool about that. I don't yeah. really want to. I've done over 2,000 makeover shows mm -hmm. right the way around the world as well, you know. And don't get me wrong, I've had a fantastic time, great experience. But when I come out of Big Brother, the, mute, the pay was up there. 
you know, I'm, of course my profile was right up there. As the years go by, we always knew my profile was at the highest it could ever be. It would only come down. It come down to a, a nice level where I can do the makeover shows. But the last six or seven years, all we want to do is create our own video content. We turn down some TV requests because yeah. they want you to race across the country, stay overnight, work for 12 hours on it, race back. Yeah. You get two minutes on television and you uh-huh. get a one-off, you know, payment and it's That's it's it. been yeah. gone sort of thing, you know. But your, your, your YouTube and your um, social medias have just grown bigger and more powerful than them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so on that note, on the, the, the YouTube, let's start. You have a million followers on TikTok. Right. Over 12 million likes. I, know, I, I noticed that the other day and I was like, wow, you know, that's literally 12 million times that people have liked my stuff. Do you know, that's yeah. crazy that, isn't it? It, it <laughs> really, really is. I mean, yeah. to put things into perspective, um, how many how many on our TikTok? How many followers do we have? 79,000. 79,000, not even a 7% of what you've got. And you've got 12 million likes. We've got about... 150 or 60,000? 150, yeah. Is it like, I can't even do the maths on that, 100 times more. How does that make you feel? Amazing, but I was grateful for when I had 79,000. You know, mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. hitting 5,000, yes. 10,000, yeah. you know, and I was grateful for all of it because I, I, it's crazy because I literally, every time I hit a milestone mm. on my followers or likes, I'll screenshot it because I think at any moment that could, That's lovely though, yeah. That could end. Nice. Yes, you know, yeah. And do you feel that way? Do you think any uh, moment it could end? Uh, no, because I, I literally, I'd, I'd always, I'd keep doing this anyway. I'm, I'm yeah. always gonna, music's my thing. Your I share passion, yeah. my story. I, I'm just real on social media. Yes, I yeah. share my music and, mm. you know, people are following me and they enjoy it, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this is where it stopped now, <clears> I would say, wow, what an experience. Yes, you yeah. You get what yeah. I mean? No, I can completely relate to that because I feel that way sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've had some weird, wonderful experiences yeah. in my career that some people will, I know will never get the opportunity yeah. to do. And I have to pinch myself sometimes thinking, you know what, wow, yeah, know. what was I doing? That, 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 you know, it's hard to take in it and mm-hmm. actually gasp. And if it did all end tomorrow, I've had a fantastic That's what I'm journey doing, yeah. around it then. Okay, so going back to your music, it, it's kind of more soul as your theme, mm-hmm. isn't it, as your thing? Mm-hmm. And you cover many different great artists and things, but you also write your yeah. own lyrics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's the inspiration around that come from? Life, to be honest. Like, mm. when I, when my dad was alive, we used to say, you know, sing about real things, not silly things, mm. you know. And if I wrote about stuff, I wanted it to be real. And I think that's why I've only, after life experiences, started to be able to write properly. Mm. You mm. know, because I've actually experienced things, yeah. you know. And a lot of what I write and a lot of what my followers um, take from the page is dealing with like grief or mm. hard times yeah, yeah, or yeah. mental health. Mm. I do a lot around that, you okay. know. Yeah. So I've I've had experienced many losses, like sadly many people have. You know, my yeah, mum, yeah, dad, yeah. Yeah, daughter. You know, there's yeah. a, there's a. Do it's you a find lot. that that helps you with the grief singing about them? Because of what I watch some of your songs, you listen to some of your songs that you're singing about your mum and things like that. Yeah, one hundred percent. And is it hard finding the words for them lyrics? They yeah. take longer. Okay. I've noticed the things that I feel more take longer to write, like because I've got to go there, you know. I've got to. Because you're personally in it, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I released one, and it was called "Hey Mum," mm. and that got to like number three on iTunes, you know, in the British iTunes, wow. and it, in mm. Australia, it's done well, and and that now I spoke with a, a, a funeral company. They put the music out for you know um, all the funerals, and mm. he said your music is one of the most requested. Oh, you know, wow, in all, really? yeah, yeah. and that is something that really meant a lot to me because I wrote that to help other people, you know, to deal with them times because yeah, yeah, I yeah. know it was one of the hardest times of my life, you know, sure is, yeah, and yeah. what a compliment that they use those songs mm. to get through those times and yeah. for those moments. Yeah. So you're they're mainly around real subjects. True stories, you yeah. know, and, and how proud of your mum be, yeah, knowing that yeah. you've written them lyrics and then knowing that it's helped so many yeah. other people who are also grieving. Yeah. about their loved ones, you know. Yeah. And yeah, that is brilliant. Isn't it? And do you get many people asking you to write them lyrics for their personal yeah. situation or their... Yeah, that, I do that a lot for people. So if they've got um, a funeral coming up or even a wedding, <coughs> like happy songs. Okay, I do sing yeah, happy yeah. songs. Okay, too. yeah. Trust yeah. me, I do. Mm. <laughs> and upbeat stuff. I know mm. I put a lot of, of the um, emotional stuff out, but that's what my audience 
we connect on as well. Okay. You know, but yeah, I get people from all over the world, you know, yes, yeah. songs for weddings, all different things. Just even a lot of people will come to me and say, my daughter's had a hard time. Can you write a song of inspiration to her? You know, and mm. I'll write a song and it's that's one of the parts of like what I do. I'd I say it's part of my job, but it doesn't feel like a job, okay, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're really one of them fun. lucky one, lucky people, who their day to day job and work in life is something that they love. Yeah, absolutely love, love doing it, as yeah. a passion. Yeah, I, I may be wrong saying this, and I, I don't know you obviously very well, but from what I'm hearing from you and just seeing your reactions to that is, I feel you would be happier continuously growing the social media, mm. writing your own music, having the your yeah. control as opposed to having a big record label who may be dictating think, and pushing think, yeah, that's what you want to what you want to sing and you know yeah. putting you in them areas to do them particular things that's like yeah. why i like self-manage as i said <clears throat> that opportunity people dream of mm. you know people go oh, you could be next to tell you could you know and don't get me wrong i'd, I'd look look at the opportunity and, and go wow yeah. right let me look at this but I, I do love the fact I get to put out what I want to put out. Yes, yeah, I can be yeah, me. Yeah. Like many a times, I'll just go on social media and not have a patch of makeup on. I'll be in my pajamas. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'll sing a song. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, yeah. and I, I'm keeping things real. You know, no one's changing me. I can write what I want to write. Yeah. And I what don't you have want to, to commercialize it. Yes, I can yeah, just yeah. do what I feel. Yeah, yeah. And I'm getting the following that matches my music and growing and enjoying it yeah, you know yeah, yeah, and yeah. if something come along and they said yeah you can keep that part of you and then i'll go yeah okay mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. i wouldn't want to change who i am and what yes, i yeah, do yeah to where the record labels it. could a little bit could yeah. potentially do yeah. that i won't mention anybody's names but you know i've known quite a lot of artists over the years singers people in groups and things all the way from the noughties you know for, let's say for the first 10 15 years who were commercialized very well possibly manufactured and made a little bit you know yeah. a little bit like what we see on the x factors and things like that in this day and age you know they fabricate them the way they want them the conveyor belts after the year they've That's dropped it, off and the yeah. next ones are are coming along That's like sad, that yeah and you know if i think of some of them people i know nowadays they haven't got anywhere near the reach out you have across social media i, I, I would imagine they're still performing and stuff like that yeah. but i don't know whether they in a financial you know a safe financial position or anything because the record labels can have been known you know for yeah keeping you know, it's all in one hand and out of the other yeah. and i i had my own personal experience of a record label i don't i don't know if you know this or not okay. um i uh had a christmas single out um you're gonna hate okay, this you're gonna hate this and i'm really really it. embarrassed even Go saying on. this but it went to silver disc the first day of release and i can't even sing Shame on me. Look at Jake's cringing now, our cameraman there. <laughs> so was my wife over there. Hey, that's who's an experience. That opera I'm trained, you, you know. I'm going to listen to this now. Look, no, no, no. We're not even going to listen to it. <laughs> it's called At This Time of Year. And I was, of course, come out of Big Brother. Very yeah. famous and, and on every TV show and every guest. and everything. Anyway, Warner Music came along and said, we've, we've had a Liverpool lad wrote a song for you called At This Time of Year. And it's a Christmas ballad. Can you sing? Let's get you down in the studio. Wow. Anyway, and don't get me wrong, still to this day, I, it, we, we spent a day and a half doing it, mm. and it's the best payday I had, mm. however, but it turned out, I'll tell you a big story to it. Um, I went down to the studio singing, here's the lyrics, blah, 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 blah. I'm in this little box. These directors are like a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Yeah. Like, blah, 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 blah. You know, I've got no experience with it. Yeah, yeah. Very closely directing me and getting every higher, lower note out of me so their clever technology can make me sound yeah. a little bit better than what I really was. Or a lot better than what I really <laughs> was, but <laughs> that's what they're all thinking, I'll go back, isn't it? Instead of having to <laughs> yeah, 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 it sounds great, yeah. <laughs> it's all the technology, it's all the technology. <laughs> anyway, um, they were like, oh yeah, this is great, you know, so I got sucked into this, and you know, don't get me wrong, I paid a lot of money for it, and then they signed me up, straight within this single for the first week of release of it, they signed me up for a half a million pound album deal. And I was wow. thinking, oh my God, this is bonkers, you know. I'm <laughs> doing all these TV stuff. I'm on all these top of the pops and all these TV programmes with crazy, your Robbie yeah. Williams, your Westlife, you know, your all these, the Spice Girls, everyone around. And um, I'm kind of competing, you know, against, and I'm, I'm kind of riding the waves along with it, just kind of getting mm. sucked up into it, you know, and 
in them days, you know, I was getting chaperoned with bodyguards, we had cars with drivers. I just looked at my itinerary, I'd be on that TV show in the morning, that breakfast show, I'd fly to there to do that, I'd do that up here, and then go to these awards in the evening, or go to, you know, at one point we were at, at Wembley Arena, you know, for a Smash It concert, and I'm, I'm, and I'm miming, you know, because I can't sing, you know, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this was all, but what I quickly realised was, that where I got paid for that day and a half to do that song, which was, you know, a enormous amount of money, pretty much two wow. annual salaries for your average person sort of thing. Um, and that's into this day and age, not in them, that was 24 years ago. What I did realise then was for the next seven or eight weeks build up to Christmas, every appearance I did was for nothing. Because I was promoting these singles. Right, okay. Where the, the six or eight weeks before that, every appearance I was doing was thousands of pounds for that one, thousands of pounds for that, oh, thousands of pounds for that, oh, that evening stuff. You know, me just getting caught up with it, not so understanding all the part, contracts yet. The and I've seen well. a lot of people, again, not mention names, who were in these bands, very successful, mm -hmm. you know, groups and things like that, who were, it was all coming in one hand and out of the other. They had the luxury lifestyles, they had all the exposure on TV and just newspapers and magazines then. There was no social media yeah. at all. Uh, and then the moment that them record labels finished with them, they've gone, and they're back to their normal, normal house, living yeah, in their normal, normal, hard, normal life, and then hard to get a job. Mm. You know, really, really hard to get a job. And for me, I quickly realised, you know, that um, it wasn't for me, the singing. You know, I couldn't fulfil the, the, the album, you mm. know. I rode the waves while it was lasted, felt as if I didn't, was misled a little bit down the line. Shortly after the, the Christmas time, um, you know, the, the song did go to silver this, so we, we agreed we'd give half the profits to the Down Syndrome Society. I was supporting them at the time, so we managed to do a £40,000 donation to them. To um, remember Damon Hill, the racing car driver? So Damon Hill's a young boy who's down, who's at his down, so we did a big kind of press thing around that, which was really good and good and nice. So I felt as if I'd done good out of it, that, yeah, but it wasn't for me, and I, I ended up paying about sixteen, pounds to get me out of the contract. That I was into. You could be in them for like three years. Yeah, yeah, nothing. yeah, yeah. That's just it. But you know, my my TV career was taken off in the building industry and in DIY, which is what I know and I, I enjoy yeah, and I course, do best. You yeah, know, yeah. you know, I currently say I enjoy doing the singing because I'm not a singer sort of thing. So, um, okay. So going back to that, while we're, we're, we're kind of on it, yeah. Can I ask and don't you can say no if you want to. Do you finance out of singing on social media? Do you get yeah. an income in any way from, can you tell it's, me about it? It's like monetization. Mm. So um, from original stuff and stuff like that, you know, yeah, and yeah. Um, some- Are you singing other people's songs? I know when we've put videos out there, I mean, we get buttons on, on ours and we've got a smaller channel, of course, but we only get, and if we put music up and things that it gets flagged, yeah, it's copyrighted. No. How, how do there's, you do that? With you can get licenses for stuff as well. So yeah. like I, I put my own version of Simply the Best out, an acoustic yes. version, and yeah. you have to get them like a, a mechanical license. No, like they have to agree to it. So you can share those okay. ones on social media. And does that media. cost you? Yeah, you just pay it just to cover basically the license mm. and they get a certain amount of the... Okay, so whatever that video does, let's say it does a, a million views mm. and you get X amount off that, it goes back that to artist like who royalty. writ that and writ the music gets a royalty yeah, from yeah. that to the okay yeah, yeah. so that, that makes it relatively fair isn't yeah, it you, yeah, you see it course, by that yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay so um is it something you would do then every day on that to kind of make a living um well I've how put, does it work I've tell me a bit more about out it as well and like you can put ones up just talking or yeah. you know bits and bobs just engaging with the audience but yeah you can you can make it from i do a lot of work as well writing songs for people as I said and yeah. that takes time obviously in the studio and stuff so you have to cover that but it's more like just bits and bobs from videos you know it's yeah, yeah, yeah. some things I'll post out and I don't make anything from but it was never I never I know that sounds stupid obviously the world you know money is a thing you, you need, money, you need money money makes the world go round you know, you've got three children you're a homeowner <laughs> you need like, income of course. The, the thing is I did start this by making nothing off it okay. it was like that money, when I started to earn from it, I was like, wow, I'm actually earning from it. Like, yeah. I, I thought, wow, this, I, I didn't think it I'd It kind of seems, just... I bet it probably felt initially like money for nothing. Yeah, I was because like, Because think of the million times anyway. you've sung for nothing. <laughs> yeah. As a child building up your experience yeah. and gigging, and I know you get paid for gigging and stuff, but you know, um, did you do casting much for different things or anything like that? Uh, in the past? 
any theatrical stuff? Yeah, do you know what? It's something I wish I'd got into more because every time, okay. even when I did X Factor, Simon Carl was like, I, th- <clears throat> I can see it in theatre, I can see it in the West End, you know? Right, okay. Um, yeah. I always kind of wish. Which is a great compliment. Oh, God, yeah. From coming from Carl. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> like, I can see it in the West End, you know? But I wish I did more of that. I did the odd things when I was younger. Okay. But I, I never knew, I never realised because back then, so as you said, social mm. media wasn't really a thing. Mm. I, I, it was always, I want the record deal, I want to be a pop yeah. star. I want, because that's know, all that was known, yeah. was the successful, that, yeah. that's the golden key, isn't it, yeah. you know, there. And now my aim is to just keep, like, posting on social media, grow my social media, yeah. enjoy it, put my own music out, and as I said, the followers are like my record label. Yeah, they sure. They get me there, you know, from just enjoying it. Yeah. But monetization, of course, is a bonus because it helps me as an independent artist. Of course, it you know does, I'm yeah. paying for all my songs, I'm paying for all my equipment. Yes, and yeah. So if anything, and it's, it's using up your time to yeah. to pleasure others in a way, aren't yeah, they? You yeah. know, they like to listen to your music, you know. Yeah. And it takes time to write stuff as well, yeah. doesn't it? Okay, so how do you juggle all that? Because you're a mum of three, aren't you? How old yeah. are your children? Eleven, nine, and seven. So what's their names? So Lucas, Ruby, and Poppy. Just really and Poppy are oh, lovely names. Yeah. <laughs> are they yeah. on school today, are they, at the yeah. moment? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Now, I won't delve into this much because I know my wife, Laura, wants to have a chat with you about yeah. how yeah. does it work being a mummy yeah. and running a successful business and being an artist and etc. Mm-hmm. and that like, but is it hard? I can imagine it's hard. Because I see how my wife struggles and we've only got yeah. two children. It can be, I can't lie. You know, juggling their after school clubs and, you know, trying to get songs done for people. And yeah. I usually as well need the house to be quiet, you know, course, when yeah. I'm recording. Yeah, and yeah. some days the days... Kids are a distraction, aren't yeah. they? Even if they're in another room. Oh, honestly, even if I haven't had the time when they're in school, I go, just be quiet for this, just one one take. You know, I'm thinking, yeah. do I need to go to studio at this point? You know, yeah, like, yeah. because, you know, it can be hard. And then obviously we I work around the days, you yes, know, that yeah. we can do. and. It can be hard, but they also understand in a way. They'll go, mm. Mum's doing a video. You know, you know, and go, shh, she's doing a video. Well, I think they're old enough to, <laughs> to understand now. Yeah. I take it, did they see you on social media? Yeah, you, you oh, they had, love it. You love it on social media, they okay. Love it. So they see what the end goal of what you're oh, achieving yeah. there. They yeah. know how it's important and they see how much time and effort you yeah, put into it. Yeah. So they're, they're mature enough to give yeah. you that space they, already at that age. My daughter wants to do it. My, my yeah. kids love it. Like they would like to do it, you know. Yeah. They're like, can I be in the video? Or they'll pop in on purpose or, you know. And my daughter wants to do I it. Did I ask, how was their voices like? Do you know is what? it running in the family like it's it, come it from your granddad is. to dad to? No, it actually is. I, really? I reckon, I'm not being biased here, but I reckon they've all got a voice. But my daughters are more into the music than my son. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And me, me eldest daughter, she she just loves it. She she's done she done the same. I done a competition, Joy Time, in, on the world. They used to do yeah. it. I entered it three times before I won. And my daughter entered it and got to the final. So now she's doing the same things. I okay. was doing, you know, okay, yeah, and she's yeah, full of yeah. confidence and she loves the stage. And yeah, yeah. when her friends go, is your mum Mandy off the internet? You know, really, well, she yeah, thrives, <laughs> thrives off it. That's brilliant. She, yeah, she loves yeah, that's it. Been, so I take it then you're as equally as supportive as like what your dad was getting oh, God, you to do yeah. all them videos and encouraging him yeah. to sing and things like that. But I suppose you're now experienced enough in this field and with social media and, and a little bit of the, the darker side of it. You mentioned earlier you didn't get a bit of the bullying side because oh, yes. kids were jealous of you yeah, in yeah. school and things like that. Is that a concern for you with your kids? If they can be get this quality that you had? See, I'm trying to get them to think how my parents made me think about it. You know, mm-hmm. when kids say to them, oh, you can't sing or, you know, you think you're better. Like they've had the odd things said to them like that. And I'll just say it's because you've got something. You know, you're yeah, special, you you're stand special, out, yeah. they want what you've got. And also my daughter always says, oh, I'd love to do Britain's Got Talent, you know, can I do Britain's mm. Got Talent? And I just go, just not yet. Let's mm. just, uh, obviously people will go, yeah, come on, let's do it. Mm. But I also want to protect her from that. I know yes. she's young, vulnerable, and, you know, she can be disheartened by getting a no. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it can do more damage than 100%. good from just that bit of experience, yeah. yeah. And if you know... In your, in your heart to heart, I mean, I've never heard your children sing around, but if you know in your heart to heart, they haven't got the quality yet mm. to become a winner on that programme. Yeah. So what's the point in putting them through the heartache for that bit of experience? Yeah. That might be, I don't know if that's a negative way of No, I, t- I of think build them up more, get them to a point where they'll walk away and go, I'm proud of what I did there. Yeah. 
So yeah. you're not coming away, looking yeah. back on it and going, and then it stops future things. Mm. I'm, I'm b- very honest and I'm glad to say that when I, when I won Big Brother, I was 28 and a half and I'd had no TV or any internet exposure. You know, the internet was just starting then. You know, no TV exposure or media exposure before that. But I'd run a building company for 10 years before and employed 30 odd guys together. So I had a good, relatively good business sense yeah. to win that program and then think, okay, yeah. I'm in this very fortunate position. My profile has catapulted up there and now I can take advantage of it to a degree mm. and cash in on it, you know, and doing and the building work or in media and kind of set myself up for the future. Yeah. I'm glad I wasn't 19 or 20 and won that program. Yeah. No business experience may have gone off the rails with the opportunities it, and things yeah. like that you know mm. so it's it's i want to build them up but i also want them to gain sensible <clears throat> knowledge with mm. it you yeah. know like i don't want them to just assume it all comes to them as well i want to see them to see the work that goes into it and yes and I'm, i do fear rejection for them you know when when we mm. when my daughter done a first competition and she didn't win but she got to the final i was like do you know how good that is and do you know what she wasn't phased Mm. that she didn't win mm. you know she mm. was like wow you know i got, to, got and i was like so relieved because yeah, yeah. i wanted them to have that i just want yeah. them to just grow a bit more and be happy with what they put out you know what they've achieved yeah to that and point. see yeah, the yeah, bigger yeah. picture yeah because it's a double-edged sword isn't it you've got to i'm sorry for parents advice here but you know, know you're trying to we're all trying to bring our kids up to be confident and aim yeah. high and you know achieve goals and have targets and things to set on but at the same time <laughs> You have got to let them trip over a little bit, haven't you? Yeah. Know, and make their own mistakes to try and yeah. build up their own immune system for that it's failure. True. Because, you know, you and I, we've all had yeah. failures. We've all had negative stuff along the line. We've had challenges. We've had hurdles to get over mm. to get to where we where we have today. Yeah, that's, um, you helped me a lot. I know I grew from all the no's I got. Or yeah. every time I made a mistake, I was like, well, I won't do that again because I'll do this. I genuinely believe... It's like my daughter does gymnastics and she was going to do a competition, just an example. And I was thinking, well, it might do her good, if, even if she's not fully ready to experience that, you know. And yeah. she, it's not always going to, as sad as it is, we wish it could always be, yes, yeah, you know, yeah. when everything. Not. But Reality, it's not, it's not. It's not. You know, you're no. going to have hurdles, aren't you? So, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I just want them to grow just a little bit more and then make some decisions, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to throw them into something and then it could wreck the future because sure, they're tainted sure, yeah, then yeah, by yeah. something negative that happened and when they were can young. Can you recall back off one of your most negative no's? How did it make you feel? and Did it set you back before you could go forward? Um, it was probably when I did I done X Factor. I didn't really take it fully serious till I got put out. Do you get yeah. what I mean? Okay, yes. And then, then I was like, yeah. now I want to do it more than ever. You know? Did you find you may have been a little bit overconfident? I, the build up to Do you know what? I think maybe in a way, because my parents were like, you can do anything, you can do anything, you'll win this, you'll do that, which is so lovely. But also, you can't win everything, you yeah, know? And no, I was no. like, oh, it's X Factor, oh, you yeah, know, and yeah, just taking yeah. it in my stride. Then when I got out, I was like, this is real, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So yeah. one way, kind of saying, you know, you could win this, you, you're, you're going to win this. Mm. Can may be built up really a bit, be, I need it to be. Yeah, yeah, may not really be the best advice. I'm just trying yeah. to learn here now from you, yeah. you know, I've got this battle, Mike, we've got a three-year-old and a five-year-old sort of thing. Yeah. It's not to say you can win, you can do that, but yeah. kind of, you could possibly, but you've got to work for I, it, you've got to build it up. That's what I always and, say. Yeah, 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 yeah. You might not win. I'll say, it'd because be Because you've got that you've experience got, yeah. now, haven't you, to pass down to yeah. your children where, do yeah. you know, did your parents have that as well? Did they perform professionally in any way? No. No, they, no. but they just all had the quality voice. Yeah, but they were like, okay. don't get me wrong, the odd time they'd say, remember, it might not work out that way, but it was, my dad was very much, my daughter's going to win this. <clears throat> do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, I... I I probably went into it sometimes a little bit confident, you mm. know, but I just want them to know that it might not go the way that mm. you want it to, yeah. but next time you could win it. So I entered those three times that competition and I won yeah. it on the third go. My oh, daughter's okay. entered one time, she got to the final and she didn't win, but yeah. that she could get to the second time, third or fourth. I see, yeah, yeah, Do you get yeah, what yeah I mean? of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that helped me, so. That helped you. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so uh, kind of away from your singing and things like that now, um, on your social media, and hope you don't mind me saying this, you're on your millions of followers on there, you often document that your kind of journey 
of losing weight. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, yeah. do you mind me talking about that or asking yeah, that? that? Firstly, fine. I think you've done fantastic. Thank so you. So totally, totally hats off for you to do that. Thank you. To, you know, because there's probably millions of people who watch this and, and aspire to, yeah. you know, what you've done. And I'll say this because I knew, do you know Rick Waller, the singer? No, Rick, Rick Waller, who was successful, in, wasn't the X Factor, what was the one before the say, X Factor? Yeah. 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 So he was quite a large gentleman. He won, he won Pop Idol, didn't he? I, I ended up living with him in a reality show, right? Oh. And he suffered with his weight. He suffered with his weight and he suffered with his confidence, things like that. Right. And I'd become good friends with him. I spent a lot of time living with him in a house. But before that, he'd won the Pop Idol, was it? Yeah, Pop Idol, the show. Um, and he used to always kind of say to me, he wished he was slimmer and he's tried mm. this and he's tried that and he couldn't. So I know there will be a lot of people out there who, who have a battle with yeah. it. What's the key? What's your success to it? Because I've, I've seen some of your posts. I went back through some of your posts yeah. and, you know, it, it's brave what you're doing. It's confident what you're doing. It's inspiring to others. What is it, the key that's driven you to do that? It, it's, I won't lie, it took me years. Mm. It, it's psychological. Weight loss is psychological. Mm. Honestly, like mm. that's the battle. Like the amount of times I started and stopped and yeah. started and stopped. But I just started to accept that was just part of the journey, you know. Okay. Until and that. what was this age from? Doing God, that? Since I, I think since I very first ever got pregnant, my weight's been a battle from then really. Mm -hmm. And when I lost my daughter, um, Scarlett, I, I had her when I was 18. Mm -hmm. From then, I kind of just turned to food. That's, that's where I can first mm -hmm. notice it. I'd eat yeah. the same like takeaway every night, like, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I comforted myself through yeah. grief with food. Okay. If no, I was happy, right, yeah. I'd eat. If no. I was sad, I'd eat. And, and that is a common factor, isn't it? A lot of yeah. people It's that, so yeah. true. That's yeah. literally... It's a kind of an instinct, isn't yeah. it, for people to do that? Yeah, yeah, you just comfort yourself in that moment and then feel rubbish after it. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah, course, why am I doing yeah. this? But it was a moment of, like, happiness, isn't it? You know? Yeah, yeah. And short-lived happiness and then yeah. you kind of pay the price for it yeah. therefore after, yeah. So what type of things have you been doing to lose weight? What's the key to it literally a lot of people keep on my social media they're like maybe she's had you know a gastric band maybe she's mm. on the injections and really no it's literally okay. just eating better so, so better a choices. more healthier choice on the literally, diet side of things literally. okay yeah I mean, so we go out for a lot of meals and stuff with the kids when we take them out and yeah. instead of going to get the steak chips and onion rings and you know yeah, yeah. i'll have a, a steak with the fat cut off with a jack of potato and veg you yes, know and yeah. so i'll go out and i'm just literally swapping to healthier alternatives mm -hmm. i'm literally just making it so it works with me lifestyle yes, i try yeah. and walk with the kids yeah. a bit more try and you know get a bit more active and yeah 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 I, purposely document my journey so I am accountable for mm, it mm. and I see how it's helping people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeps yeah. me on track. And, and that can keep you driving more harder yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. literally just eating better. I did start the gym as well, but I need to get going there a bit more. But my lifestyle's okay. so hectic. Yeah, but yeah. Well, that's but, the yeah. difference. I mean, that my wife Laura has said earlier about she wants to do her own podcast and it's only going to yeah. be talking to mummies yeah, who are yeah. successful, like yourself, in businesses or mm -hmm. artists or whatever area they do. And, and it's the same kind of thing that's coming back to her all the time is the mummies are so tied up. They've, they've had their yeah. children. They haven't quite lost the weight that when mm -hmm. they've had the children. They, they want to have time to go to the gym. They can't because you're juggling business, you're juggling yeah. kids. And it's it's a difficult kind of I, treadmill I that you're on, isn't and it? I put my how I cared for myself last. last. I think yeah, I yeah, I yeah. didn't realise. And that's a probably a mummy instinct. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, even as a dad instinct as well, your kids have to come first. My work gets neglected because I have to have time with them. And I, well, yeah. I want to have time. Well, with them. I do too. I don't I'm, say we I'm have to. Yeah. On loads of stuff because yeah. I'm doing everything else in in life as well with the kids and yeah. whatever, and I'm trying to work it around it. You know, it's. Just, just part of living, isn't part it? It's real. Living. Yeah, it's yeah, real yeah, life. Yeah, it's so. brilliant. And you covered anything else then across your social media? Um, anyway? me, mental health, I talk about that quite a bit. Okay. You know, yeah. every day I'll put a reminder out to people that, you know, it's okay to talk, you know, and brilliant. you're not yeah. alone. I like to I like to remind people about that a lot. Excellent. You know? That's good, is it? And is it something that you've suffered with yourself? Yeah, obviously you? with through through grief and, grief, and yes. loss and mm -hmm. I've I've suffered up and down with it, and some days, even still now, out of nowhere, you can just feel like empty. I don't know what it is. You can just all of a sudden have that down day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll post because I'm like, if anyone else is feeling like this right now, yeah. I understand you. You know, okay. you're just yeah. a bit bit o overthinking or you know yeah. really busy. Do you, and do you know is there a key thing that triggers that off? Yeah, I 
I don't, I, do you know what? I'm, I'm really lucky because my mental health is great, but I know mm. some days things can catch up with you, like grief yeah. and, yeah. you know, just general. I think that, that, that's, that's normal for everybody, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Everybody suffers in one yeah. way or another. You know, whether it's grief, whether it's stress it, about work, media, yeah. you know, or negative comments on social media, you know, we yeah. all we all get them, get them out there. But as we said earlier, you know, these things that don't kill us make us stronger, it's don't true. they? Yeah. yeah. So what's next for you? Just putting more music out, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. getting more dates to tour and meet followers. Yes, yeah. I've yeah. got loads of people saying like in America and all sorts, and I'm like, I yes. wish, I'd love yeah. to get over there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'll, tr I'll, I'll try my best, you know. One well, day. That's the dream, like yeah, yeah, yeah. just to go yeah. everywhere and meet all the supporters and just keep making music that, you know, hopefully reaches more people. And, sure, sure. You know, my, if it climbs up the charts, amazing. Yes. But either way, you know, it's helping people. And I'm it's being, helping people. Yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, honesty. Yeah, yeah. And you have got a, 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 a local tour, Merseyside tour, is it coming up soon? Yeah, so I've done Manchester. Yeah. We're all... Um, I've Where got are they? Do you know the... the, the I've got Liverpool houses next. You're doing in Liverpool next, yeah. okay. So that's in the Irish Centre on the 1st of June. Yeah, it's in, in Liverpool. And can, where can we get these details from? Have you got a website? Yeah, I've got a ticket website. So if you go on, onto my page, you'll straight away see, you know, my Mandy Fisher um, Facebook. Yes. There's a link there for me tickets. There's a link there for all yeah. the details on there, yeah. is it? Brilliant. Yeah. Well... We wish you all the very best with your tour. I'm going to Thank keep you. listening out for more music that you're doing, so writing much. your own stuff and covering other people's as well. Yeah, It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And, and you. I, yeah. I feel honoured that this is your first podcast that you've shared with me. No, I was saying we were, we were coming here and I was like, I can't believe I'm actually like going to like meet him and have a, <laughs> an interview. Because as I said, I've watched you since I was, I was younger. So it's a, it's a real moment for me to go, wow, you know, I'm oh, really... That's sweet. I'm really doing something. That's you know, really like, nice. That's so. really. Did I ask how old were you when you were, when I was on Big Brother? Do you know what? Brother? I can't even remember. Uh, what year I was don't it? even think you were old enough to watch Big what, Brother. Yeah, I was. What, what, what year was it? It was two thousand. It was twenty four years ago. So I must have been eight. About eight years of age. <laughs> Naughty mummy and daddy shouldn't have been letting you watch oh, no, Big we Brother. Oh no, 60 minute makeover. That was the TV show for me. Let me tell you something even funnier <laughs> as well, right? My wife Laura, you you have a chat with her in a bit. She was only 15 when I was on Big Brother. She used to sit on their couch, sit on their couch at home with her mum and dad, and her mum used to say, turn that rubbish off the TV. I don't like you watching that nonsense. And the dad used to be like, no, it's good. Come on, we'll go and watch you it in the other room. How <laughs> <I'll ask> that. <laughs> you went on to meet me and marry me. That's crazy, isn't it? Wow. It's funny. Listen, Mandy, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank Same. you very, very Thank much. You, Hopefully we'll have you back here again yes, in the near 100%. future and we'll have another chat about more stuff. Definitely. Brilliant. My pleasure. Give Thank us a kiss. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.